فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم So my definition it encompasses two main points كونه قولا it has to be it has to be speech تخصيص cannot be action cannot be used for تخصيص specification and we'll speak about that soon straight after this we're going to be going into af'al the second thing that my um, my definition encompasses is that that speech of yours has to be a speech which the Arabs have placed they have made it show specification because remember when we spoke about usul al-fiqh what did we say that it roots from al-kitab wa sunnah wa aqwal al-arab the speech of the Arabs Usul al-fiqh is from the Arabic language, did we not say? Who is the person who placed Usul al-fiqh? وأول من صنف وأول من ألف في الكتب محمد بن الشافع المطلب وغيره كان له سليقة مثل الذي للعرب من خليقة Who is the first person we said that placed it? الشافعي رحمه الله And Imam al-Shafi'i was what in the Arabic language? حجة He's a proof If you say Shafi'i said this, then it's a wajh من وجوه العرب you don't need to be in qala Allah and qala Rasul. He's a proof in the language. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala. Well, that's why I told you Abdul Malik al-Asma'i came to Shafi'i. Abdul Malik al-Asma'i is what? An imam in, he's an imam in the language. He came to Shafi'i at the age of 16, 16. And he said to him, he said to Shafi'i, tell me about the ash'ar of the people of Hudayl. I'll write it from you. And he wrote it from him at the age of 16. And Shafi'i read it to him from the top of his head. And he copied it all down and he kept it and he went. And the reason why Shafi'i said that, he learned the Arabic, uh, the, the, the uh, Shu'ara al-Arab, the poetry of the Arabs and the pre-Islamic lit literature was so what? لِأَخْدُمَ الْفِقْهَ Brothers, underline that point. So I can serve the fiqh. The reason why I learned the Arabic language is I want to serve fiqh. So usul al-fiqh and fiqh and the religion is Arabic language. So when we look at a word, is it general? We need to go back to the Arabic language. Do the Arabs consider this to be general? Yeah? When we look at a word and we say this is khas, this is specific, we look at the Arabs, do they see this to be specific? <laughs> we have to. Then the author, rahimahullah, he talks about at least, which is the ruling. Now he goes into hukm, the ruling that is deducted and taken from when the khas comes. What's the ruling that happens now? Now we learn what khas means, we took its definition, we understand what it means. When khas comes, what happens? Are you with me brothers? What's the ahkam and the rulings that come from it? The author says, This is the hukum. When takhsis specification occurs, and this thing was general. What the takhsis does is that it takes some of the, 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 the things that were under the am, it takes it out. It says, you stand here. And says that you are no longer under the am. Are you with me, brothers? So for example, if I say to everybody, yeah, stand up. And I said, Ahmed, not you. Ahmed is taken out from the am that was there. This general ruling of everybody stand up, Ahmed is taken out of it. So what takhsis does is, it gives Ahmed an independent ruling, which is, you don't have to stand up, you can sit down, if you, can, you can keep remaining in your position. Does that make sense, brothers? That's the hukum that comes from takhsis. Then the author, rahimahullah, he tells us the types of takhsis there are. And he says, and he explains to us, and now yanqasimu ila qismain, that it's divided into two. The first one is muttasil, and the second one is munfasil. Two types of takhsis there exist. Brothers, are, you, are we all together? We know what khas means. We understood it now. We also even know the hukum al mutaratib the rulings that are deducted and taken from the khas. We're now swiftly moving on to the types of takhsis there is. The author says muttasil wa munfasil. Connected and disconnected. Mutasil means connected. 
and munfasil means disconnected. So what do they both mean? Define it for us. What do they both mean? Define it for us. Let's take the first one which is the connected one. The one that's known as Al-Muttasil is التي لا تستقل بنفسها It's the one that can't stand independently It can't stand independently The Munfasil, the Muttasil means the connected one It can't stand independently And the second one is التي تستقل بنفسها The one that can stand independently the author, Rahimahullah, the author, Rahimahullah, the Mukhassisat al Muttasila, the connected specification, he, he, bought, he bought only three, three types. How many types did he bring? Which one? For the, the connected one, the connected khas. How many did he bring? Three. He bought al istithna, shard, and sifa. Istithna, which is exception, shard, which is condition, and sifa, which is what? A description. We're now going to go over the first one of the three that he mentioned. These three fall under which heading? Al Mukhassisat Al Muttasila, right? The connected specification, right? Are we all together, brothers? So we're now going to go to what istithna means. Istithna is ikhraju ma lawlahu la dakhala fil kalami. Istithna means to take out. And if you didn't you if you didn't take it out, it would have entered into it. Ikharaj is to take something out of something and if you didn't take it out, it would have entered under the same ruling as the rest. This is called istithna. This definition of the author is basically a linguistic lexical definition. It's not a technical definition according to the usuliyin. It's not. The second one is shart, condition. The author did not define shart, nor did he even define the third one, which is sifa. If you look at it, he didn't define any of the two. He only defined what? Al istithna. And what does shart mean? And what also does sifa mean? Shart means ta'aliqu hukmin ala hukmin bi adatin ma'lumatin. Shart means connecting a ruling with another ruling with particular wordings that you use such as adawat shart which you study in what? Nahu, you use those adawat, there are instrumental letters there are tools that you use to use it as a condition it's called adawat shart So the, first, the definition of shart stands on two pillars. The first one is ta'ariqu hukmin ala hukmin. You're connecting one ruling to the other ruling. Meaning this won't happen unless this happens. In qama zaydun aqum. If Zaid stands, I will stand. So my standing is connected to Zaid's standing. If Zaid doesn't stand, I don't stand. Does that make sense, brothers? Like what's the condition for this? It's the condition is Zaid stands. I've connected my action, the ruling of me standing up, to the ruling of Zayd standing up. And I use a letter from the letters of Adawatu Shart, which the scholars state in order to fulfill my needs in saying so. The Shart, 
is the second one. The third one is Sifa. Sifa is basically a description and a characteristics. It's what the, uh, the grammarians will call Na'at. What would the grammarians call it? Call it? They call it Na'at. An Imam Abu Mudaffar Sam'an in his Kitab Al-Qawati'ul Qaw Al Adilla, he mentions that, no, Usuliyin when they say Sifa, it doesn't mean Na'at, which the Nuhat call it. And that Sifa is more comprehensive and more general than Na'at, according to them. Because it's true. Brothers, pay attention. Because under the Sifa for the Usuliyin, Hal, Tamiz, fall under Sifa for the Usuliyin. Hal is a Sifa in Usul, Usul Fiqh. Tamiz is also a Sifa according to the Usuliyin. That's just a grammatical benefit, inshaAllah ta'ala. Then the author went back to Allah, mentioning four matters pertaining to the istithna, which is the exception. The author goes back to speaking about what? The author goes back. So the author first of all told us the definition of khas. Are you with me? Then he told us the ruling of khas, which is number two. Number three, he told us the types of khas there is, that there's a mutasil ana, munfasil. Then the author told us that the khas, which is mutasil, that is three, he mentioned. Are you with me, brothers? Does that make sense? Then the author went back to the first one of the what? The khas, which is mutasil, istithna. And he told us, Four masail, four matters pertaining to the istithna, which is the ex exception. Does that make sense to everybody? The first one is wa inama yasihu that the condition. Sorry, the, 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 sorry, the istithna, the exception, it's correct, it's accepted, it's taken into consideration. Bisharti with the condition, an yabqa min al mustathna minhu shay. That whatever you're doing the exception from, something is remained. For example, you can't say, No one stands from the people except no one. Where's, which one are you talking about? Well, it's the same. Something has to be left from it. I have to leave somebody out of it. There has to be something remaining from that which I'm doing the exception from. Does that make sense? So I have to say no one is allowed to st uh, uh, no one is allowed to ex stand except Fulan. But if I say no one is allowed to stand except no one, this is not. So the first condition is there has to in ayabqa minul mustathna minhu shay. Something has to remain. The second condition is. It has to be connected to the speech. This is a, this is a view that the Ahnaf don't believe. The Ahnaf believe you can do it istithna after. You can uh, you can come and do it tomorrow. So you can say oh, my wives are divorced and you come back, and the next day you can say accept this one. Sah? The Jumur believe if you don't do the exception now, and your speech is not connected then all of them are divorced from you. It's Aam. It's not khas anymore. So if you say, my wives are divorced, and you go to sleep, and you wake up next day, and you say, except you. No, 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 no. Because the condition was what? What was the shart? And you call them bil kalami that the speech is connected. Does that make sense? The, sec the third one is, so the first two are conditions from the conditions of istithna. Without those two, this is not called istithna. It's kalam which is lagwi. You're just speaking. You're not making sense what you're saying. Then the author mentions two other points. And he says, وَيَجُوزُ تَقْدِيمُ الْإِسْتِثْنَاءِ عَلَى الْمُسْتَثْنَى مِنْهُ No one is allowed to stand except Khalid. Can I say except Khalid? No one is allowed to stand. Can I put it before it? For example, is that no one's allowed to stand except Khalid. 
Can I say, except Khali, no one, is, no one else is allowed to stand? According to the view of the scholar, uh, you're allowed to do that if you want to. You can place taqdim al istithna, you can put the illa before the mustathna minhu, no problem. He doesn't mind. The fourth matter that he mentions is, وَيَجُوزُ الْإِسْتِثْنَاءِ مِنَ الْجِنْسِ وَمِنْ غَيْرِهِ The fourth one is that the thing that I'm trying to take the istithna from, does it have to be from the same essence of the thing? So for example, if I say, no one is allowed to stand except the monkey. Is the monkey the same jinns as all of us? Because we don't believe in Charles Darwin's concept, right? We're not from monkeys, they're brothers. Yeah. We don't believe... You do Zakaria? No, no, I'm agreeing. Oh yeah, Jazakallah khairan. <laughs> I was worrying, brother. <laughs> we don't want that wookie stuff, yeah? Evolution. Does that make sense? He's saying that you are, you are allowed to do a thing that's nothing to do with the essence of the thing that you're doing. You can't do istithna out of it. That's not a problem. It doesn't matter. Does that make sense? Even if it's not the same jeans. Are you with me? He said, what are you doing? min al-jins wa min ghayrihi. Then the author, rahimahullah, went on to speaking about two matters pertaining to condition shamp. He says, the first mas'ala that he mentions is, وَالشَّرْطُ يَجُوزُ أَنْ يَتَأَخَّرَ عَنِ الْمَشْرُوطِ Which is the condition the shart and the mashroot can you go back to front just like you did with istithna For example I say I'm going to stand if Zayd stands Can you say if Zayd stands I will stand Can you do taqdeem and ta'akhir the Sheikh says, وَالشَّرْطُ يَجُوزُ أَنْ يَتَأَخَرْ عَنِ الْمَشْرُوطِ You can delay it. It doesn't have no effect, inshallah, it won't harm it. When he says it's permissible here, he, what he means by it is لَا يُؤَثِّرُ فِي الْحُكْمِ لَا يُؤَثِّرُ فِي الْحُكْمِ النَّاشِ عَنْهُ It doesn't affect the ruling at hand. Okay? The fourth mas'ala, sorry, the second mas'ala that he talks about regarding a shart is وَيَجُوزُ أَنْ يَتَقَدَّمَ الْمَشْرُوطِ and it's also permissible for it to go forward. So it's allowed to go build, and it's also allowed to come forward. No problem. Then the author, Rahimullah, he speaks about um, restricting a description. The issue of taqiyidu bi sifa. He goes into this mas'ala. He says, He says, Wal muqayyadu bi sifa yuhmalu alayhi al mutlaqu. كالرقبة قيدت بالإيمان في بعض المواضع وأطلقت في بعض المواضع فيحمل المطلق على المقيد. The author here he speaks about he speaks about restricting a sifa. This is a mabhath under sifa. Are you with me, brothers? Allah subhanahu wa taala he said to us in the Quran. وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا خَطَأَ فَتَحْرِيرُهُ رَقَبَةٍ فَقَدَا لَا يُؤَاخِذُكُمُ اللَّهُ بِاللَّهُ فِي أَيْمَانِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يُؤَاخِذُكُمْ بِمَا عَقَدْتُمُ الْأَيْمَانِ فَكَفَّارَةُ إِطْعَامُ عَشَرَةِ مَسَاكِينَ مِنْ أَوْسَطِ مَا تُطْعِمُونَ أَلِيكُمْ أَوْ كِسْوَتُهُمْ أَوْ تَحْرِيرُهُ تَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ What next do We're just told here, free your neck. In another ayah, Allah says, وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا خَطَأً فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ huh? مُؤْمِنًا So the first verse, which was unrestricted, got restricted with the second verse, which is what? That it has to be a believer. With a, this characteristic is what restricts it. Are you with me, brothers? Which is the mas'ala that the ulama talk about, which is known as mutlaq and muqayyad, is what he's speaking about here. Restricted and a what? A non-restricted. The author's speech here has two directions. He's talking about it from two angles. The first one is called Jihatul Ta'seel. Brothers, are you with me? The author is talking about this line, this, this sentence that he just said right now, and this point that he brought forward, is he's speaking about it from two angles. One is known as Jihatul Ta'seel, the angle of placing the foundation. 
the angle of placing foundation which is what he's clarifying to you that the restricted with a characteristics is a specification for the generalized that's what he's trying to say for in terms of its tafsil the foundation for example he's trying to say to you sometimes the khitab of the shara the sharia is addressing may occur and then it restricts it with the characteristics this is the intent of the author from this angle and what he means here by the word mutlaq is really am he really means what he means generalization he means it am but he only used the word mutlaq from the angle of what ala wajhi tawassu' fil alfaz he's not really watching his term and how he uses it in English, as we, as we would say, he's using the term loosely. He's using the word loosely. The other angle is jihatu tamthil, from the angle of bringing an example to you. Which is that when he brought the example, The author here is trying to bring you an example that would allow you to understand what it means by mutlaq and what it means by muqayyad <coughs> the difference between mutlaq and am and khas and muqayyad what is the difference there's one underlining point that makes it different mutlaq is generalization that is done from the angle of what ala wajh badali and the am is done from the angle of shumuli ala wajhin shumuli that's the difference what does that mean let me explain it to you mutlaq means unrestricted am means general so what's the difference between the two mutlaq means mutlaq means that the generalization here they're both generalization by the way Mutlaq is general and Am is general but the difference between them the generalization between the two of them is Am you can't restrict it to something whereas the Mutlaq Allah says فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ مُؤْمِنَ Free the neck of a believing woman okay here what's needed from me is to free the neck of a, to free a neck to free somebody if I can't find this, I go to another person, another woman, another person, another person. Until I find a person. When I find that person, I'm restricting this general ruling into the specific person now. Are you with me, brothers? The arm, on the other hand, stays arm. You can't restrict it to anybody. You can't narrow it down to any particular person. It stays ala wajhin shumuli. It always encompasses everybody. Like in the application of the mutlaq always becomes muqayyad. Because you have to narrow it down to something. Does that make sense? Then the author rahimahullah mentions ama, the mukhassisat al munfasila, which is the second one. What's the mukhassisat al munfasila? It is the disconnected specification. We spoke about the connected one, right? We're now moving on to the disconnected specifications. The disconnected specification, my beloved brothers and sisters, it goes back to three things. Al-shar'u, al-hissu, and al-aqlu. It goes back to these three. Al-mukhassisat al-munfasila means the disconnected, which is that which can stand independently, sah? Huh? The munfasila means what? That which can stand independently, right? It goes back to three usul, three foundations. The first one is al-shara'u, the sharia. The second one is al-hissu. It goes back to, can we say empirical evidence? Tangible evidence, it goes back to that. And the third one, it goes back to? It goes back to um, al-aqlu, the aqal. The author is not going to speak about the other two. Are you with me, brothers? 
he's going to speak about only the first one, which is the shar'i form of specification. And what is the shar'i form of specification? He mentions it's what? Al-Kitab, which is the Qur'an, and the Sunnah, and the Qiyas. These are the three that he mentions. And the author tells you and explains to you, the Qur'an is... The Qur'an can be specified with the Qur'an. And it can also be specified with the Sunnah. Are you there, brothers? The Sunnah can be specified by the Qur'an and it can also be specified by the Sunnah. The Qiyas, are you with me? It can be specified with the Qur'an and it can be specified with the Sunnah. He mentions all of that for you. Then the author says, What we mean by utterance is قول الله, the speech of Allah, وقول الرسول, and the speech of the Messenger. Again, what did we say? Generalization, generalization and specification is connected to speech. But which, which speech? Allah and His Messenger's speech, not your speech. Allah and His Messenger's speech. So Qiyas cannot specify the Kitab and the Sunnah. Uh -uh. But it can be specified by the Quran and the Sunnah. Naam.